In my humble opinion, before us is THE hardest required boss in the game. Considering the point in the game new players are most likely to challenge him, his role in our critical path of upgrades, and how strong we're likely to be by this point, the Soul Master is equipped to kick our shell from here to Dirtmouth. The main thing to worry about is his mobility. He's far from the first teleporting boss, but in combination with his attacks and his ability to fly, he is very difficult to pin down, and recognizing his attack patterns is complicated by how much range most of them have. This guy has more command of his arena than anyone we've faced so far, but let's break him down and figure him out piece by piece. The Soul Orb. The Soul Pinwheel. The Dash and the Desolate Dive. The Soul Orb's properties are completely identical to those of the Soul Warriors, pursuing our position and despawning either after a few seconds or after hitting a surface, or the night. Likewise, its main weakness is in its wide turning radius. And furthermore, no matter where the Soul Master fires the orb from, its starting position will always be above our head, which makes dodging it a breeze. Just dash underneath the oncoming orb and it'll disappear into the ground no problem. He likes to do this attack several times in a row, but he won't always. I recommend remaining relentlessly on his tail while he does this attack. By dashing towards him, you'll both be dodging the orbs and getting in position to strike. The Soul Pinwheel is an attack that looks more difficult to dodge than it actually is. The Soul Master will appear to one side of the arena surrounded by four orbs. These orbs will not target the knight, but will instead rotate around the Soul Master as he crosses the stage. When he reaches the far side, he will launch the orbs back across, maintaining their pinwheel formation. This is easily the most complicated attack we've seen so far, but all you really need to know is that the direction the orbs rotate is based on which side of the arena his attack starts on. Clockwise on the right, counter on the left. This means that the orbs closer to the ground will always be moving towards you as long as you are in front of him. This ensures that there's no safe spots to stay grounded while he sweeps across, especially not the corners. But all you need to do is jump at the right time to let one or two pass safely beneath you. I recommend getting in a cheeky little upward slash here, both for the damage and to keep yourself from bumping your head on him. On the orb's way back, there will always be a huge blind spot right here in the center of the stage, and this is the perfect time to use some soul, either to heal or launch a vengeful spirit after him. The dash is as simple as it gets, fairly similar to some other dash maneuvers that we've already seen, but this attack is a lot slower. That can actually make it a little tough to safely jump over, since you might end up just landing on him, but that's nothing the nail pogo can't help. The biggest threat this attack poses is how similar it looks to his soul orb attack on startup. Mind you that the dash can only begin in one of the corners, whereas the soul orb can begin from just about anywhere. The best defense against this complication is to just assume that he's going to dash whenever he spawns in a corner, and give him his space in these instances. Finally, we have the desolate dive. He'll crash down from directly above, landing with a burst and sending out shockwaves in either direction. This attack definitely makes things difficult, as it looks like it has three separate elements to avoid. However, that flashy burst that he does where he lands has no hitbox, so that's one less thing to worry about. You essentially have to dash in order to clear the landing, and have to jump in order to clear the shockwaves. On its own, that's not so bad, but the Soul Master has a second variety of this attack that's just... flat out rude. He can do a fake out and immediately follow it up with a repositioned dive. It seems that which variety of this he does is essentially random, but in my own experience he always seems more likely to do this if you jump up too close to him before he finishes the first slam. I honestly have no idea if that's something that's in his code or not, it's just what I've noticed. More importantly, this is extremely difficult to react to if you're already in the air. My only recommendation is to focus on dodging while grounded until after he's landed, and only then jump up to avoid the shockwaves. Don't even worry about hitting him while he does this, just dodge. Our game plan here is a little easier said than done, but this is the kind of boss that you want to just wail on relentlessly. Pursue him with dashes and let loose with your nail whenever he's not attacking. Since he's staggerable, this playstyle is generally rewarded, as you'll always have time to heal when he's stunned. Keep up the pressure while he's using his soul orb attack, and keep getting in what attacks you can during the soul pinwheel and the dash. Only let up when you see him wind up a desolate dive. This is yet another fight where you'll want to return to the center of the stage when you're not attacking, as his sporadic teleports can place him anywhere on stage, and if you're off-center, he could wind up off-screen and send an attack at you that you're not prepared for. Now let's show this guy who the real master is. Surprise! Second phase! After wearing down his first health bar of 275 HP, he'll come at you with all his desperation. 
Now with 110 HP remaining, he can no longer be staggered and will only use two attacks. The Desolate Deluge. And the Soul Storm. The Deluge will see him use a modified version of the Desolate Dive four to seven times in a row. These slams home in on the knight slightly, making them more difficult to dodge, but they don't have shockwaves. Furthermore, this explosion on the landing has a way smaller hitbox than it looks like. Much like the Desolate Dive, I recommend dashing to the side and jumping just before he lands in order to avoid the widest part of the hitbox. However, since this attack doesn't have any shockwaves, it is still a lot easier to get some hits on him during this attack should you feel so bold. Here's how it goes. Dash away when you see him appear, then as soon as he starts crashing down, turn around, jump, and slash. You can tell he's getting hit because of these orange splashes. Not necessary, but definitely possible. Stay alert though, because this attack also has a fakeout variant. This is still less threatening because of the lack of shockwaves, but dangerous nonetheless. Whether you're attacking or dodging, midair or grounded, all you have to do is dash away in response to the repositioning, and you'll be just fine. His other attack, the Soul Storm, is going to be a much better opportunity to deal some damage. He'll use a modified version of his Soul Orb attack three or four times in a row. The differences here are that he doesn't move or teleport while the orbs are firing, but the starting positions of the orbs still do. This makes for a tricky conundrum, dealing damage versus dodging orbs. Obviously you want to deal damage because apart from the risky hits on his dives, this is still your only chance. But dodging orbs is still very necessary. If dodging them were all that mattered, this would be effortless. Just run towards their starting positions and lure them into the ground. The issue is, you want to deal with them as fast as possible to get back on the offensive. I recommend dashing liberally to get this done. More than anything, I would recommend you do not risk healing at any point. Focus your time and efforts on closing out the fight and heal when it's over. Even still, bear in mind that patience is key. If you don't feel safe attacking at any given moment, just hold back. You're so close to the end of the fight. Don't get reckless and finish strong. Next up, back topside, is the Soul Master, the covetous god of soul. He wishes. He's more of like the usurper god of soul. Not too much has changed here. Only really the shape of his arena. It no longer has the entrance over at the right side of the arena that has some spikes on top of it. That barely makes a change, though. Of course, his health is significantly higher, 600 uh, in phase 1, and that's it for that. And he does still have his second phase, he still kind of does a, a new version of the fake out. And his next phase here is going to have 350. What's interesting about this guy, compared to Soul Tyrant, which we've already fought by this point, is that the slower speed of the Desolate Deluge here is going to be it's going to make it kind of harder to dodge in a way. If you're more used to dodging the the faster attacks with his Soul Tyrant variant, then he can actually sort of fake you out. And that's without even considering the fact that he can still fake you out to begin with. So far so good though. Now on to Ascended difficulty. Let's just nail him a few more times. For some of the easier bosses, it does almost feel like a shame that you are obligated to go through the lower difficulties instead of just going straight through to the, the higher ones. But at the same time, I definitely can see why they did it. Of course, one other change that we've gotten here is going to be against this attack. It is now effortless to dodge through it using our Shade Soul. No need to fancily time a jump or anything like that. And what's more is dodging his fakeouts is way easier now that we have both a double jump and the inv invincibility of the descending dark. One thing that's like slightly amusing about this fight is that during that thing where he glitches all around the screen, I guess glitches, teleports isn't around the, all around the screen, the god seeker back there will actually watch him and her head kind of goes just a little bit crazy, just be like, yep, yep, he's over there, over there, over there. And like, maybe there's something to her if she can really track him that well. Of course, he has 600 HP on this second phase here in this fight, which does make it a little harder to one cycle in. But that's it for that, and I did that without getting hit, so hopefully, uh, hopefully Radiant goes just as well. Now 
we haven't really been seeing him get staggered too much, just because I'm actually beating him too fast. But this guy's staggers are pretty nifty. Oh dear. Shoot, he got me. <laughs> what I was saying about his staggers a second ago is that he actually will uh, take... He is able to take a couple of hits during his stagger if you do it fast enough. Such as if you use this spell. So I highly recommend that, just to get things over with a little bit faster. But honestly, this guy is no big deal to us. Not at this point. Let's just show off on him a little bit, use his, use his own spell against him. If anything is going to get you doing this fight, it is going to be the fake out. But that's the primary way we're going to dodge it. When you see him spawn above you, dash to the side, jump, dash back, or double jump, and then use whichever aerial maneuver you didn't use in the first place. Sort of like a zigzag pattern. That should help you evade no problem. Once again, with this attack, you can get in some some cheeky little slashes while he's going about his business here. And that's a pretty fast way you can get him down through this last phase. You'll know you're hitting him when you see the orange splashes. Oh dear, that's fine. And again, the fact that he can fake you out during this, but the Tyrant can't, is a very strange little difficulty nerf on the Tyrant. But there we go. Not a big deal at all. Hey, thanks for watching Boss Blitz. For any challenge not related to the bosses in Hollow Knight, check out the playlist on the top left of the screen. Next up is the Soul Master's rematch, the Soul Tyrant. <laughs>